Welcome to the Swanee Middle School News Show. This week we'll have lots of updates, including an interview with Mr. Abercrombie. Be sure to stay tuned until the end for another race made by Isabella and Haley. And now for our announcements. On Thursday, April 14th, progress reports will go out. We have no school this Friday. Spring break is April 18th through April 26th. The DRC Center is offering extra tutoring with programs like Canvas, Focus, Already, and more. Tutoring is offered Monday through Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. The center is located across from Swanee High School. Teachers here at the school are still offering tutoring in math, language arts, civics, and 8th grade science. Tutoring runs from Monday to Thursday until 3.15. Talk to teachers for more information. And now to the weather forecast with Alexi. This week has an average high of 82 and an average low of 56. There's a chance of thunderstorms and rain on Friday. Now to Darius with the inspirational quote of the week. No one is perfect. That's why pencils have erasers by Wolfgang Reby. Now back to Haley with community events. The Swanee County Fair is here. It's open through the 15th to the 23rd. The armbands are $20 from the 15th to the 20th. And the 22nd and the 23rd, Sunday the 17th, is the Hispanic Musical Entertainment Night. Thursday the 21st is Friday Night. So armbands are $15. Now back to Isabel and Maddie. The SMS Esports Club is looking for students interested in supporting their live streaming. See Miss Neal or Miss Dean if you are interested in graphic design, broadcasting, directing, or sound, and can stay on Tuesdays and Thursdays until 5 p.m. And now to Alexi and Haley with the craft segment. Hi, I'm Alexi. And I'm Haley. And today we'll be making a tissue paper flower. So to start off, we're going to list our supplies. You're going to need five rectangular sheets of tissue paper one per pipe, flower. One pipe cleaner per flower, and then a pair of scissors to cut your rounded edges. So here Haley will show an example of what we'll be making. This kind of flower. If you would like once you're finished, you can add a button in the middle if you want to cover up that green part. We'll talk about that once we finish um, demonstrating, but let's start off. So you're going to want your five sheets of rectangular tissue paper gathered into one, like so, you can, like this, and then you, you will fold, fold it in what's called accordion style, so you'll fold, fold it, it this forward, way. and then you'll flip this. it over, and you'll fold it backwards. That is called accordion style, because once it's done, it looks like a little accordion. It looks really pretty. So forward, then backwards. backwards. It doesn't matter and if your pieces forward. are even, because um, it's a tissue paper flower, it's going to have its flaws, and that's what makes it pretty. Really pretty. So now that we've folded it frontward and backward like an accordion, be sure to keep it in place, and then take your pipe cleaner, and you're going to want to take the very last piece of it, so about this much, and like Haley's and demonstrating, like you this. tie it. So... Just, you can do a regular little You don't have to tie knot. it, but you can, like, just put it like that. Um, or if you want it to be extra stable, you can tie it like I'm demonstrating. Yeah. Tie it, and then you can fold, if you have any extra pieces, over to make sure that it stays in place. So this is how it would look so far. And then you're going to start to... Spread out the edges on the side without the extra piece in the back. So on the side that you want to be the front, spread out one side's edges and take one layer of tissue paper and start to scrunch it up. So that's going to be your first layer of the flower. Just like make it in a rounding shape, scrunched up like Haley has demonstrated. Then take the other side and take up your first layer. Also, what you'll need, to, it up. What you'll need the scissors for is... Oh, yes, cutting our rounded edges. Whoops. 
we forgot that. But take your scissors and cut your rounded edges. Yes. If you don't want rounded edges, that's okay. You can. Leave I'm gonna it do like mine that. without rounded edges so I can show y'all what it looks like. And, and I will do mine with, with rounded edges. edges. So rounding your edges, you just want a simple little circle, and then be sure to be doing this on a covered area where you can keep track of your scraps. So take your side, scrunch up your first layer, and then take your other side and scrunch up your first layer of tissue paper. You're going to be repeating this until you have all of your layers scrunched up. Remember, there should be five layers. I do the other side, too. So that is how you know that, um, that's why we need five layers to make it look like a flower. And so, it'll be really pretty once you're done. This typically looks like a rose. There are other types that you can do to make, um, different types of tissue paper flowers, but scrunching up these edges is your main part of what makes it look like a flower. It looks like Haley has finished hers, so that is what it looks this like. This is what it mostly looks like without, without the rounded edges. Be sure to scrunch it up on the sides as well because they are, it is tied in the middle, so you want to scrunch it up on the sides. I am almost finished. But you want to pull your sides together to make sure that it looks like a flower. So, pulling up my edges, and then I'll be through. These layers are really gorgeous. Makes it look like a ripply little rose. So, I finished as well. And here's my... Just adding a little bit more touch-ups. Yes, add a little more touch-ups, if you'd please, to make them come together. More like fluffy as it looks. And look like a flower. Remember, yours isn't going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly how ours looks or how anyone else's videos look. Because they've probably been doing a lot more than you have. And you just started. Here so is, is my tissue paper flower with the rounded edges. Mine with not the rounded edges. You can choose whichever one you like. Now, this one also has rounded edges, just so you know. And here's the last part. If you would like, you can add buttons like in the button. middle to cover up those little green stripes from your Should pipe cleaner so that it looks like a real flower. The pipe cleaner is just for the stem if you want to put it in, like, a vase or something. Um, if you want to hang them up, then tie it with the string uh, and then like cut off the excess put string. Put this like this, and then you can be like... Yep, you like can also, and pipe cleaner is the best, because you can bend it in any way like Haley is And showing. you can also put it on your wrist, so just in case if you want to like wear a flower on your hand. Maybe a fake corsage. That is how you would do it, so... And this is what it looks like. This is how you make a tissue paper flyer. Thanks for watching. And now, back to Darius with his interview, interview with, with Mr. Mr. Abercrombie. So, Mr. Abercrombie, thank you for being with us today. Happy to be here. Thank you, buddy. Now, today I'd like to talk to you about the occurring thing that's been happening this year, clubs. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your favorite club? Well, my favorite club, I mean, I'm going to have to choose my club that, that I run, and that's the Great Outdoors Club, where we talk about hunting and fishing strategies and um, things like that. But I know the Cooking Club is very popular, and I got to eat a brownie from there the first club day, which was nice. Um, there are several others that, that the stop motion animation when this hit is really cool. And, um, man, we just have so many. You know, we have a lot to choose from, so hopefully everybody can find something they enjoy. That's nice. My personal favorite is the cooking club too. That's right. Um, secondly, what is if you since you said you're a part of the outdoors club, what do you exactly do? So our first club day, what we did is we had um, Bryson Osteen, who fishes for the Florida Gateway Bass Fishing Team. He came in and he talked to our our club about fishing strategies, different ways to you know put a worm on a hook how to tie different knots, things like that. We also talked about not just bass fishing, but some brim fishing in the river, how to do that. 
Um, this upcoming club day, we're going to have um, a couple guys come in and talk about some turkey hunting because it's Ooh. turkey season. Uh, how to call, how to do different things. So we do a, just anything with the outdoors, with hunting or fishing. Or Coach uh, Hurst, our math teacher here, did a did some stuff with survival skills on oh. the last club day. So different variety of things in the outdoors. That sounds pretty. That sounds like a very helpful club to yeah. help you later in life. Yes, sir. Uh, third, uh, are you planning? It, next year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 2023, the big, a big year. Everyone's happy getting off. Will there be clubs next year? Um, that's the plan. As of right now, we certainly plan to have clubs, and we want to make it even better. Um, you know, we started this year with everyone just kind of staying in one of their classes and trying different things to see what the teachers like doing and what the kids like doing, and then we opened it up after Christmas to let everyone choose and so our goal for next year is to to start with that to let everyone choose their club and if the teachers like what they were doing this year they could keep doing it if they wanted to change they could change and hopefully there at the beginning of the school year we can kind of do our survey like we did and put it out and um, get everybody sorted into a club and, and ready to go from the beginning of the year I like the survey. It gives you an option if you don't, if you can't get this class, then at least you'll get the other one. Right. You get a get a few choices. Yep. Yep. Um, also, how did the, the development of this? Pl how did the development of clubs happen? What made you think about starting it? So, you know, when our elementary schools went to the different themes, we have the art school, and we have the the STEM school, and we have the leadership school. Um, the leadership school, one of the things they did was clubs. And so we want to try to keep the things that they're doing at the elementary school that are working going. And so, for instance, if the, if the art school, if Riverside is doing a dance class, we want to be able to offer something like that too to those kids. Or if they were offering chorus, we started chorus this year. And so we're just trying to feed off and continue doing what they're doing that's working. And so one of those things at Springcrest was the clubs. And so they enjoy doing it. Uh, my kids go to Springcrest and club day was always one of their favorite days. So we wanted to do that and really just give the teachers and the students a chance, you know, once a month to just say, hey, let's let our hair down, let's just have some fun, let's forget about English and math and all that for a little while and just do something that we all enjoy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of math either. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. <laughs> uh, and, it, and I know some clubs are like, are the club I'm in, football development's a club. Yeah. So do some clubs help, some clubs are they for fun or and developing or are they yeah. just in general purpose? Yeah, so there are some clubs that are basically they feed off the, the organization or the activity that you're already in, for instance, football. Well, that gives Coach Stebbins and Gaddy an extra hour, you know, a month to have some guys out who maybe didn't play football this year or interested in playing next year and let them kind of see what the workouts are going to be like. Or for ROTC, the students who are in ROTC, they stay in ROTC for their club just to give them more time with that. FFA, kind of the same thing. And so you can have it where the organization you're involved with outside of school time, you know, in the afternoon, is also part of your club. And that just gives you some more time with that organization. Wow, that sounds like a really smart idea. Yeah. Um, next year, when are you planning to start clubs again next year? So, you know, the, the general thought is that we'll come back in August and hopefully once the school year gets kicked off, probably won't have a club day that first month in August, but start it up in September would be the plan. Uh, what do you think the people from, um, you know, you know, people from elementary mm -hmm. and all that, they're coming, the fifth grade are coming into middle school. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everyone sees all from middle school, so, well, gosh, here we go. So, well, do you think f clubs would be a good way just to throw everything back and let people enjoy it? Well, I hope so. I mean, that's the goal. We want clubs to be fun. We want everyone to have a good time and, like I said, just have that hour a month just to kind of let the teachers get to know the, the students outside of the classroom setting or maybe meet some new students because, you know, you, most of the time the students who are in your club may not be your students. And so gives us a chance to just kind of form some relationships and, like I said, just have a little fun. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, I like how the clubs, some clubs are like the arts and crafts clubs. Mm -hmm. That's a really good club because you can also do stuff like that's really going to help you. Do you think later in life these clubs will develop your skills like, like, you, like the class you teach? Yeah, I mean, it could, certainly. Um, you know, you mentioned the arts and crafts, but, like, there's a card-making club. And so some of them are helping the community because that card-making club, they make cards for different nursing homes and folks that, you know, may not have that interaction with, with students or really anybody on a day-to-day -day basis. And so some of that stuff, like you said, 
yeah, we certainly, the stop motion animation, well, maybe that gets somebody motivated to, to go follow a career path in that, or if somebody discovers they have a love for cooking, or somebody discovers a love for, um, you know, team building, like with Miss Horton, or Miss Hicks is doing a really cool life skills, where you're just learning things to help you in life, like you're talking about. And so I certainly think for some of the clubs that is a goal, is to help students kind of as they go along. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you. Um, a couple last questions we have mm -hmm. for you is, do these clubs, do some clubs help out the community in different ways? Well, yeah, like I said, we had the card making club that they do that. Miss, um, Miss Fry's doing a gardening club, so they're starting to grow some things. They have them a little, a little greenhouse out there. And so um, the goal is for more and more. We're trying to bring the community in also. We have some volunteers come in and do the um, flags with Mr. Phillips, and so you have the community getting involved in some of these clubs. Like I said, every one of our club days, there's somebody coming in from in the community to teach our kids about some outdoor skills. And so there certainly are, there is a lot of that. Not with every club, but we do have that with several of them. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Abercrombie. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Thank you all for having me. All right. This is Mr. Abercrombie. I'll see you later. Be sure to check out bullpupsnews.com to find our latest poll and give us your opinion. We will announce the results next week. Thanks for watching this week's show. I'm Maddie. And I'm Isabella. Be sure to tune in next time. Have a great week.